Let's get introduced to the main character of this book. His name is Jean-Marie Medza. Now, Medza is a college kid. He's from the village, but he, he's usually, most of his life, he's just been outside going to school. And right now he's in college. That's how the story begins. He's just left uh, school going back home. And he's actually failed his college exam. Now, you can see from the beginning of the book that he's very, very scared of his father. He doesn't know what's going to happen because he's failed his exam. His father is one of these strict fathers who's disappointed in anything. Any, any, anything that he sees that you failed in, he sees you as a disappointment. He actually shows where, where he, says, uh, he sees his older, older son, who is Medza's older brother, as a complete failure in life, who has done nothing with his life. Now, Medza arrives in town, or in his village, and he meets up with his aunt. It appears that the news of his failure has already reached the village. My man does not want to see his father now. He's completely scared. Medza has a cousin called Niam, whose wife has recently left him. He treats her badly and makes her do almost all the work in the fields. She also hasn't been able to get a child, so he's also very mean to her about that. So she runs back to her village. When Medza comes back home, the cousin and a few other guys see this as the perfect opportunity to get the wife back. They have tried sending gifts to the father-in-law, but to no avail. Medza now is to be sent to Kala to get Niam's wife. He's baffled by this since he's very young. But according to an elder called Bikokolo, since Medza has school certificates and is in college, the village people of Kala will be intimidated by him. They might think he wields some authority and can even get people arrested since he knows French and can write letters. Medza tries to argue his way out of the mission, but at this point, it's already been decided. Well, on the bright side, he doesn't have to see his father yet and gets scolded for failing his exams. His father put the fear of God in him. So Medza gets the chief's bike and begins his journey to Kala. When he arrives in Kala, he finds them playing a sort of dodgeball game. And the champion of this game is a guy named Zambo. Zambo is very tall and muscular and could just about beat everybody up. Zambo happens to be Medza's cousin. He is to be hosted by Zambo's father, Mama. Medza is surprised by how welcoming and friendly Zambo is. Zambo acts as a guide for Medza. They go with Mama and Zambo to Niam's wife's place, but she is not around. Medza has to wait until she comes back. The villagers, as expected, are very happy to have Medza in their presence. Everybody wants to be around him. To them, Medza is a sophisticated man who knows how to talk and act like the white man. A man of culture, if you will. He even gets a few friends he hangs out and drinks palm wine with. His uncle begins arranging meetings for Medza. Almost every day, Medza is called to different houses for supper, and the villagers take their time asking him all types of questions. He at times has a hard time explaining some complex topics, but the villagers are all too willing to listen. After every visit, he is gifted with things such as goats and hens. So his uncle is all too eager to accompany him, and even almost makes it his sole responsibility to choose which invitations to accept and which to reject. Of course, as most people would, he accepts invitations from the people he knows are little well off and will give a gift. They agree with Medza that he will get to keep half of the gifts that Medza receives. Of course, men of that nature have a way of making it look like they aren't simply using you, but just a matter of blood ties and obligation. In the meantime, Zambo makes it his mission to find a lady for Medza. You see, Medza is not a ladies' man. So he's a bit conflicted about this and a bit worried about his cousin's enthusiasm to get him a lady. And since Zambo is a man of his word, he gets a girl for him. One who happens to have rejected the other guys in the village but is fond of Medza. They meet and Medza isn't feeling the vibe. Zambo does not give up, however. He introduces Medza to another girl. Her name is Edima. She happens to be young, barely a teenager but Medza likes her. So they hit it off and they eventually start hanging out a lot. He seems to be somewhat getting accustomed to life in Kala. During the day, he hangs out with the young people and evenings are reserved for the old people. 
his relationship with Edema develops, and well, one thing leads to another. No need to get into too much detail on this. Our parents used to tell us to go sleep when the bold and the beautiful would come on, so you'll understand. So on one fateful day, Edema's mother walks in on them. She drags Edema out, beating her. Medza is shocked and now knows this is going to be a big scandal. All the respect he had garnered will be gone. When Zambo finds out what happened, he laughs and jokes about it, telling him that this was all orchestrated by the mother. She wanted it to happen so she can brag that her daughter was the one the city boy chose. Medza is surprised that nobody in the village causes any fuss. Everything continues on as normal. After about a month in the village, his cousin Niam's wife returns, but she is in the company of another man. A meeting is then called, because now this matter has to be decided. Because Niam had already paid dowry for the lady, she either has to repay back the dowry or go back to the village with Medza. She says that she doesn't have the money to pay back her dowry or the, the resources to pay back. So she agrees to go back to the village. Now, after this matter has been solved, Medza is invited by the chief, uh, him, his uncle, and Zambo, uh, to stay a while. Uh, the chief really insists on it. When they stay, they see this celebration still going on. So they, Medza is wondering what is going on here, but one person is missing. He notices he hasn't seen Edema in a few days. So he starts wondering where she could be. But she sees there's a lot, of, a lot of girls dancing, things going on like some sort of celebration. After a while, these women and girls dancing, they bring forth a girl. And lo and behold, it happens to be Edema. This thing has just been planned out by the chief. I hadn't mentioned to you guys earlier, Edema also happens to be the daughter of the chief. See, the chief has so many wives because of his position in the village. And Medza is sort of coerced or sort of put in a situation now where he has to marry Edima. Of course, he's not really upset about it because he's in love with her. So that settles it. He goes back home with Edima. Now, it is agreed that Medza will go back home. And then after two weeks or so, Niam's wife will come and Edima also will, will come along with them, along with all the, the goats that he had gone and all the gifts. So basically, he has to go before them. Now, during this journey, Medza is super terrified because he doesn't know. Uh, he's, ba he's basically uh, left the village, uh, his hometown as a boy, and he's come back as a man with a wife. Plus, he remembers he still failed his exam, and he hasn't seen his father yet. Uh, he's a complete embarrassment to the family probably now. That's the way he sees it. So when he gets home, uh, his father's a little cold. They don't talk. He doesn't tell them what's going on. He keeps on, you know, uh, trying to uh, see if he can get into a confrontation with his father, but his father really is not really uh, receptive. After the two weeks are up, the village, the people of Kala come. At this time, Medza has gone away. He's getting drunk somewhere because he really does not want to be there when that news is uh, broken. He comes back drunk and he sees uh, there's still people there. His father is there. They get into a confrontation, him and his father. His father wants to beat him up. He wants to like completely kill him. First, he failed his exam. He's a complete, he's a complete failure. And now he's already, he's, he has a wife. So it's basically what, uh, it's the present day thing where it's like you drop out of school. You go maybe get, get a girl pregnant and this, you don't have a job or anything. So basically that's, that's how his father sees him. So they get into this confrontation where it's a, uh, it's a bit dramatic because his father starts to chase him. It's a whole thing where his father is chasing him, telling the other men to chase him too. Uh, it's a drama. It's, I don't think that people in the village have seen something like that in a long time. After that, uh, he gets into this place where his father falls down while trying to chase him. It's a whole embarrassing and his father has to like walk back home. Soon enough, uh, Medza goes and uh, tells his small sister to gather his stuff or she's not able to because the father is, uh, threatens her that he's leaving. He leaves Edema behind. He just walks away. Zambo also decides to follow him. And uh, that's where the story ends at that particular time. Uh, they We fast forwarded uh, about uh, 20 or so years later where he's telling the story that he's never actually gone back to the village. So what happened to Edema? Believe it or not, Edema got married to Medza's older brother. However that happened, nobody knows. As for... 
Medza and Zambo, they just live their life doing uh, various things. Nothing too impressive. They've just lived life. Just been the two of them, the buddies, living their life to the fullest, I guess. And that's the story of how one, one month of adventure changed the whole life of this young man. And that is Mission to Color. Thank you.